Sanjay Baru, let's broaden this discussion a little. It's not just the reshuffle that has brought forth criticism of the Prime Minister from the media. At the moment, he seems to take the blame on practically everything, whether it's 2G, CWG, black money or whatever else comes up. Has the Prime Minister's gloss worn off? Is that the problem? Oh, well, that is part of politics. Someone who's been in office for six years, I mean, if you're an editor of a newspaper for as long as some of us have been, the gloss wears off, you know. So, I think uh, six years in a job, people uh, get a bit uh, jaded or tired of uh, the same thing. But having said all that, I think the country's expectations from the Prime Minister remain very high. And on a variety of issues, he continues to deliver. I mean, India is the world's okay. second fastest growing economy. Uh, we have not had any major communal uh, riots in this country since uh, 2002. Uh, you know, okay. th things are stable. The Naxalite problem is under control. So I think you have to give him credit for a lot of things. But of course, there are things that go wrong and he must take the blame for those as well. The problem, Chandan Mitra, is that earlier the media rated the Prime Minister extremely highly. Many people thought he was one of the best Prime Ministers we had today. When the faults and the flaws are more apparent, is the media overreacting or is it coming to a more balanced judgment? Which is it? No, I don't think the media is overreacting. I think the media has been uh, unusually kind to this Prime Minister. And uh, even now, I don't think the media is uh, really uh, out hammer and tongs uh, against the Prime Minister. It still has a certain sympathy for him, would like to see him do better. But there is a disappointment. Okay. There is a disappointment which is gradually creeping in. That the Prime Minister seems for so powerless to act when his own instincts suggest otherwise. So, um, and the point that Sanjay made about being jaded. I think you see, when a person gets jaded, feels helpless, powerless, unable to enforce his writ in, in his own cabinet, people running at cross purposes, ministers gunning for each other in public. In that kind of scenario, I think there either has to be a complete kind of makeover, not just of image, but of resolve. Okay. And we don't see any kind of makeover on the Prime Minister's part. In it, fact, he's getting drawn, dragged more and more into a quagmire of indecision. Let me very quickly, in the minute that we have left before a break, and Ram put a slightly different thought to you. Sanjay Baru talked about perhaps the Prime Minister getting jaded. Is it possible that after six years, and it will be seven in May, that the media has become a bit bored with the Prime Minister, that a sense of ennui has set in? Is that the problem why the gloss is worn off? No, I think the there are very good reasons for the gloss wearing off. That's in policy. Everyone concedes and in fact admires the Prime Minister's personal financial integrity. Very, uh, very rare in uh, Indian politics today. But uh, the, as for the de his defending the indefensible, they are rightly critical and uh, the tone has got uh, extremely critical on, uh, uh, in respect of these scams. Okay. The, look at the letters between the Prime Minister and Mr. Raja and you know the Prime Minister is fully uh, in the picture. Absolutely. About me, what was me, happening let, at let, the time let, it was let happening. Let me stop with that. I don't want to divert to 2G. I want to end with the thought that you left us with that the media is fully critical and right to be so. In which case, let's take a break and come back and ask what can the Prime Minister do? Can he recover his lost image or is it too late? That's the question in a moment's time. See you after the break. Welcome back. We're discussing the media and the Prime Minister. Sanjay Baru, what should the media, sorry, what should the Prime Minister do to recover and recoup his image? You were until very recently his press advisor. If you were there still today, what would you suggest? Well, Karan, since you introduced Chandan Mitra as editor of Pioneer and a member of the BJP, and you've introduced me as editor of Business Standard and a former Prime Minister's media advisor, I think in all fairness, your viewers should know that Mr. N. Ram is editor of the Hindu and also a member of the CPM, or at least he was a member of the CPM. I don't know if he still has membership. So we have very political views coming through. We are not just three editors here, so I think that your viewers should know in all fairness. What should the Prime Minister do? I think there is a lot that he can do and he probably knows what he should do. Uh, and, you know, the budget session could be the beginning of a new phase uh, in the revival of the government's fortunes. 
Okay, the budget session should be the new phase. But Chandan Mitra, for seven years, the Prime Minister has refused to give interviews, and therefore, he's actually voluntarily not taken up opportunities when he could explain himself to his country, leave aside to politicians. Was that a big mistake? And does he need to correct it? Well, I think the Prime Minister ought to be much more communicative than he has been so far. You see, he gives some sound bites off and on, uh, like as he gave on the day of the cabinet reshuffle, where I think uh, it was very um, uh, unfortunate that he said that he was not an astrologer and so couldn't uh, predict when inflation would come down. A rather insensitive remark. This could be much better explained had he given a proper interview. He gave one interview uh, before the uh, Indo-US uh, nuclear uh, deal and that actually went down pretty well with many of his supporters. I don't understand why the Prime Minister shies away from communicating. His press con only one okay. press conference uh, that um, um, was held was actually a damp squib. Nothing newsworthy emerged out of it. Prime Minister, I know. Uh, is a good communicator when he is one on one but uh, he just shies uh, away from this because I think the top Congress leadership uh, both Mrs. Sonia Gandhi and Dr. Banmohan Singh have decided among themselves that they should not uh, uh, expose themselves to media interaction lest there is some slip or some uh, kind of you know um, uh, stories are twisted around. And Ram, I and Ram, let, can, can, can I stop you there, Chandan? Can I stop why, you there? You've raised a very important question. I want to bring N. Ram in. And Ram, do you think the reason why the Prime Minister shies away is because he is a different personality to the sort of politicians we're used to? He's unassuming, he's low key. And now, today, when his government's in crisis and he needs to be forthcoming and outgoing, he simply doesn't have it in him. I think whatever be the contribution of personality and temperament, the main problem, Karan, is he faces a huge credibility. His government faces a credibility problem, if not a crisis. The opposition may not be in great shape, but this government on issues of corruption, in particular, faces a credibility crisis. And uh, the Prime Minister naturally gets much of the flack. Okay. And he's responsible for it, he's accountable for it. Sanjay, I know that you frequently, as his advisor, would suggest that he do interviews. You've recommended several, I know, including a couple for me. What would the Prime Minister say? Well, I mean, his point is that media, there are too many TV channels, too many newspapers, I can't speak to X and not to Y, I can't speak to Z and not to, you know, P or whatever, and that uh, he would prefer to have media interactions. And I must say, at least when I was there, he did a lot of press conferences, not just in Delhi, three national press conferences in Delhi. And in every state capital, I don't think any other prime minister has ever done press conferences in state capitals. I organized each one of them. Okay. So he did communicate with the media, but collectively rather than individually. Gentlemen, I'm going to put the same question to each of you. And I want you to give me a short, sharp, simple answer. First, Chandan Mitra, can the prime minister recover and recoup his image or is it too late? A quick answer. Well, I think it is too late because the Prime Minister is really under a cloud on having presided over perhaps the most corrupt uh, regime we've had and also with the JPC issue unresolved and the Prime Minister being absolutely adamant on this, I don't see how this confrontation can end and this okay. will only put the Prime Minister I, more I, I, and more I'm going to stop defensive. you there. I've only got 20 seconds to bring the others in. Quickly, Ram, too late or can he do it? Probably too late. Because uh, he's ending the, he's nearing the end of his term. <laughs> Probably he's too late his... from both Ram and Chandan Mitra. Three. Sanjay Baru, what's your advice to the PM? No, no, too he's late, okay? Three more years. He's not. He, he's not ending the end of his term. Uh, he's three years ahead of him. Harold Wilson said a week is a long time in politics. He's got a long time to re recoup his I'm going I to stop you there. I'm afraid we've run right out of time. A week is a long time in politics. The Prime Minister has three years to go. That's, by the way, over 150 weeks. That will have to be the last word. But remember, there were several that disagreed with Sanjay. My thanks to all my guests for joining me. And if you have been, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Good night.